From the chaos you compose A song that all creation knows You took a mess and you made life You said let there be life Word of God, God from the start Recreating human heart Make us like the moon and night A mirror of the light Trust the words that the dark to fly from John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14 In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God He was with God in the beginning Through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Happy New Year! We have finally said goodbye to the weirdest, most difficult year that we've faced so far. 2020 has changed our perceptions forever. For example, previously we stayed away from negative people. In 2020, we learned to stay away from positive people. And in a strange turn of events, old folks are sneaking out of the house and their kids are yelling at them to stay indoors. 
Now it's considered more caring to not give people hugs and handshakes. And it's totally normal to go up to a bank teller wearing a mask and asking for money. This one virus has created a new normal that we've all quickly adapted to and discovered a wide array of alternative solutions. It has not only affected us, but it has changed us. But even more instantaneous and infectious than a virus is light. Think about that for a sec. Light and darkness cannot coexist because even if there's just a little tiny bit of light, it is no longer dark. That light provides hope and guidance, but many of us fail to recognize that because our focus is on the widespread darkness rather than on the light. And of course, the light we speak of is Jesus Christ. Today's text tells us that Jesus is the light that permeates throughout the darkness, and yet there are still so many who cannot recognize this light. And I'm not just talking about people who do not believe, because even among so-called believers, we forget to let the light of Christ shine in us and through us, and we give into the darkness way too frequently. If we were to create an analytic of some sort, we will most likely find that we spend significantly more time getting discouraged and feeling weighed down rather than hopeful and at peace. But it's a new year and thus the perfect time for us to reset and strive for another fresh start. Among all the resolutions you're making for yourself this year, we need to recommit ourselves to strengthening our walk with God. And there's no better place to start than in the beginning. See, when we hear the phrase in the beginning, most of us churched folks will immediately think of Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, let's read the first few verses of Genesis together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. and The spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. Now check out the first few verses of the gospel of John that we just read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I don't think this is mere coincidence that these two passages are so similar thematically. The very first verse of the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible firmly establishes God as creator of the universe. It doesn't leave anything open to interpretation. God did it. God made the heavens and the earth so everything. And not only did he create everything, by his words, all things were created. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Then we switch over to John and we find that in the beginning was what? The Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And that Word, Jesus, God's Son. God's Word, aka Jesus, was there in the beginning and also created all things. This parallel between these Old and New Testament texts confirms Jesus' purpose for coming to this earth to be the tangible hands and feet of our invisible God. As John later writes in verse 18, no one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the father has made him known. The theological term for this is incarnation, God in human form. God came in a form that our limited human minds could comprehend. But beyond that, God brought into this world Jesus, and Jesus was the manifest word. What God spoke, God brought into existence. God's word and God's actions are one and the same. 
Likewise, Jesus was human, and yet he exhibited the same divine quality. What he said and what he did were always perfectly in sync. And not only was Jesus there at the dawn of creation, he is the originator of light. God brought literal light into the formless void and darkness, but Jesus was the metaphorical light that would bring the world out of the darkness of sin. As John describes, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. In the beginning, God created light so that light can be made available to everyone. Then Jesus came so that he could be the light to everyone. Genesis 1 verse 4 tells us God saw that the light was good and separated it from the darkness. John chapter 1 verse 5 tells us the light shines in the darkness and the darkness could not overcome it. This is the very light that was prophesied in Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. So not only did God bring both his word and the light into being, it was personified in the person of Jesus. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. And if that was the end of the story, Jesus would be just another mythological figure, but the gospels go further and shows us exactly why Jesus came. Because yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Even though God sent Jesus such that God himself might be recognizable to his own creation, the Bible tells us that the world did not recognize him. Now think for a second how bizarre that is. Here's God waiting to claim his creation, not just as created entities, but as his own children. He would endow all the rights, the privilege, the inheritance to all those who would receive him. And that's all that was required to be brought into the kingdom, to receive his son. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you are marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. We are all included in that promise. Now, some of you might have never heard about this saving grace that is Jesus before. Others of you may have heard the message of salvation a thousand times before. But whether this is your first or thousand and first time, the message God is giving to us all is the same because God has not changed. He still yearns to be close to you. He still wants you to abide in his word and know that you are his treasured creation. He wants you to escape the pull of temporary pleasures that live in the darkness and rather come fully to the light of Christ. He wants you to receive his son such that you may also be sons and daughters and not the kind that's like the black sheep in the family tree, but his beloved favorites. Because make no mistake, you are beloved. Our church slogan and theme verse for 2021 comes from Daniel chapter 10, verse nine. It says, do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed, he said, peace, be strong now, be strong. But I actually love the NRSV translation of this verse, which says, Do not fear, greatly beloved, you are safe. Be strong and courageous. These encouraging words come from a messenger of God to the prophet Daniel. Daniel, as you might know, was famously exiled in Babylon. And at this point in time, he was over 80 years old. But to this man who had lived most of his life at the hands of tyrant rulers away from his native homeland, the word of the Lord gives gives him these words of comfort. Do not fear, you are safe, be strong and courageous. And not just because you need to suck it up and stick with it, but because you are greatly beloved. God was reassuring Daniel that salvation would come to the people of Israel. 
that even though the people had experienced great sufferings, largely due to their disobedience, but nevertheless, God would bring deliverance. And you all, greatly beloved, God is bringing you the same reassurance. Because no matter how terrible this past year has been, or maybe even larger parts of your past has been, salvation is here, and his name is Jesus. So friends, believe in Jesus. Not just that he is a person that existed, not just in his power, but believe that he is your savior. Believe that the creator of all things wants to be in a relationship with you. Receive the Son so that you may know the Father, who is the God who welcomes you, waits for you, and is bursting to fill your life with His Word and His light. This is the beginning. Even if you've been attending church your whole life, this is it. Let's start anew and make every effort to get to know our God more this year and every year thereafter. Don't be afraid. Greatly beloved, you are safe. Be strong and courageous. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending your son to this chaos that has become our world. There are so many voices, both within and without, that keep us from the darkness, that keep us in the darkness, and keep us away from your heavenly light. God, like you spoke at the beginning of time, speak into the deepest recesses of our hearts. Let there be light. Chase away the forces of the enemy. May we be freed from the prisons of our own self-doubt, fears, worries, and disease, and bring us into a deeper, loving relationship with you. Help us not to just stay in the beginning, but to keep moving forward so that we may know you more and more each day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.